Well, today's topic is modesty. Modesty has been a controversy for years between people groups and religions and among women. Normally when it comes to rules about modesty, a lot of times people think about how women should dress or how women should behave. And laws and codes surrounding modesty range from one extreme to the other. On the one hand, you have people often like radical feminists who believe that women and men should be able to wear whatever they want, especially women, should be able to wear whatever they want without anyone telling them otherwise. And that's how you get naked marches in the streets or nude photos being posted with pride because, hey, it's my body, I can do with it whatever I want, and it's your choice to look at me a certain way, and that is your own problem to deal with. On the other hand, you have other extremes where basically every inch of the person's body, man or woman, need to be covered in order to protect against sexual lust or to protect against pride or to be humble. Whatever the case may be, there is the two extremes. The one is very modest and the one is not modest whatsoever. As an American, it seems to be much more common for me to see in modesty than it is for me to see modesty, unless it's like wintertime and that's just by due necessity of the cold. Otherwise, normally within the states, people seem to dress in modestly, especially during the summer times and especially at the beach. And for that reason, when I see someone dressed modestly out in public here in the states, it normally captures my attention. It stands out as abnormal. And typically when people dress very modestly or wear a certain type of robes or certain type of dresses or certain type of hair coverings or whatever they may be, it normally is because of religion, and religion often has a lot to say about modesty and how men and women should dress in order to honor God, honor their gods, honor their spirit, honor themselves, whatever it may be. And having wondered about modesty and religions that are modest, I started to think, what are some of the most modest religions out there? And a few came to mind, but I did a little bit of research and did a little bit of digging, and here's some of the top three most modest sectors of religions that I could come across in my digging. To start off with number three, I want to start with the Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jewish men are well known for having their big hats and their curls down the side of their head and wearing like these black and white suits normally. And then the women are well known for wearing skirts and dresses and dressing relatively very modestly actually. Much of the reasons for why Orthodox Jews dress the way to do is based on the Old Testament, based on the Torah, and based on some of the other teachings from Jewish rabbis. Orthodox Jews want to be separate from Gentiles. They want to be distinguished from people outside of their faith. They want to be noticed as different. They don't want to be of this world in that sort of sense. So they dress modestly to respect and honor God, to refrain from pride, and to help refrain from lust and some different other sins within their religion. And dress is also very important when it comes to certain holidays, when it comes to certain sacrifices or certain sacraments that they perform, because within the Old Testament, within Scripture, uh, it's noted what people ought to wear if they're priests or rabbis or other teachers or leaders within the Jewish community. And because of these reasons that they dress in many garments and they dress in a way that is supposed to not emphasize the shape of their body and draw attention to themselves, this is why I put them at number three. Number two are Anabaptists. Now, not all Anabaptists dress extremely modestly or have the same sort of requirements. There are varieties within the Anabaptist community, which is just a smaller denomination within the Christian religion. The Anabaptists I'm referring to when I talk about Anabaptists in this section are the conservative Mennonites, are the Amish, and other denominations that are well known for their modest dress. And the reason why these Anabaptists dress the way they do is based on what the scripture says about modesty, sexuality, and some other different topics. So for instance, lust within the New Testament is considered adultery, it's considered sinful, and so therefore women and men will dress modestly to help prevent other people from stumbling into lust and sinning. It is also mentioned within the Bible that people shouldn't try to draw attention to themselves with wearing a lot of jewelry or braiding their hair in certain ways and putting gold everywhere and trying to draw attention to themselves and to their body. So it is better to dress modestly and work on your character and may your character be the emphasis of who you are. Although I will say as a final note is that when most people think about Mennonites and Amish, they often wonder why they wear head coverings or wear veils over their head. Specifically, the women do. And the reason why women wear a head covering is because of 1 Corinthians is supposed to be a sign of submission and humility and respect for male leadership within the marriage and within the church. And that's why a lot of Mennonites and Amish dress the way they do. And I grew up actually as a Mennonite and I have Mennonite heritage, so I am rather familiar with this community 
and the things that they believe. And most people that I grew up with would be surprised or shocked if there could be anyone even more modest than the most conservative Mennonites and Amish out there. But there are a there is a sector of another religion that I would say is even more modest than when it comes to dress at least, but it's even more modest than Mennonites and Amish. So number one is Islam. Now not every Muslim dresses the same way or has the same sort of dress codes. So for instance, I have met uh, Muslims here in the West uh, when I went to college and went on internships and stuff, and I ran into different Muslims who dressed differently. So there were some who dressed pretty much like every other Westerner here in the States and they didn't have too much that distinguished them from the others. But then there was others who were kind of in the middle. They, they dressed modestly. They dressed uh, in a way that wouldn't draw too much attention to themselves. And then there's some that were on a really extreme. And so, for instance, I met a woman here in the States uh, when I was on an internship who was a Muslim. And she wore a burqa. She wore a full-on burqa. And all you could see was her eyes. There was nothing else you could really see from her. And the sectors of Muslims who enforce this sort of modesty or uphold this sort of modesty, I would say are probably some of the most modest people when it comes to clothing and to dress around the entire world. There's, it can't really get much more modest than that after you cover pretty much the entire body of someone's, someone's physical physique. And by what I can best understand, the reason why Muslims enforce modesty is for a couple different reasons. One reason being that the Quran and Muhammad taught that women specifically especially should uh, dress in a way that is modest. Women specifically should wear the hijab and cover their hair um, because that's what the Quran says they ought to do as an act of modesty. But in general, men and women are expected to cover their bodies and be respectful of their bodies. So not to, again, draw attention to themselves, not to be bolstered up in pride, and also to help with either sexual temptation and things like that. So those are some of the top three most modest religions around the world when it comes to dress and how men and women are opposed to uh, present themselves. Now, in the comment section below, let me know if I missed any religions that you think are just as modest, if not more modest, or if there's anything that I missed about these other religions I just talked about that would be relevant to this conversation and to this topic. So let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, as always, I just ask that you like it, leave, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe if you haven't joined the Like the World community where we continue to explore religions and continue to dive into these sorts of topics. And as always, no matter where you're from or who you are, I just continue to ask that you guys keep going out there and lighting the world. Thank you, friends.